Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of EverQuest Old School. And you can see that I am playing my Cleric yet again, thankfully, because I've been playing my uh, Tweaks a little bit, or not my Tweaks, my Olds a little bit more than normal. I'm a level 21 Cleric at the moment, and I am back over in Unrest. Now, the reason for that, and I do apologize if the noise is a little loud, I have to, I'm working on my sound. Uh, yeah, he's buffed. Let's see... Wheeling up the pet because we don't have a tank with us. But the main reason I'm back over here, and we're breaking into the room, so I may have to stop in mid-sentence and concentrate on what we're doing. It does look like there's another group over here doing something. See somebody already in here? Or is that our guys? That's our guys. Okay, so I was actually over in Mistmore earlier today, and it didn't last for too long. I was there for about an hour. And the zone is just so camped that I couldn't get into a group. I sat there at the entrance. Almost no trains what to, whatsoever to speak of. It's weird because it was so heavily camped. There was just nothing to, to train on anybody. And if you did, people would be thanking you for it. It was even worse than the experience weekend. Uh, there, had, there's how many, there was like something like 50-something people in the zone. I think that zone can handle like... 30 something at max like 35 36 uh, and then the whole zone is pretty much camped this had a whole bunch more than that so I'm not quite sure what all those people were doing I saw about uh, 11 or 12 people sitting at the entrance so maybe that's what it was uh, including a couple of clerics as well around my level and some above my level so yeah I just you know unless I got pure luck uh, on my side I wasn't getting in a group over there so I said you know why don't I come over here to unrest and check out to see if uh, maybe the groups are better maybe I can get finally in to the fireplace room up there and yeah it didn't seem to work out that well uh, I got here and there was almost nobody here it's weird going from a zone that's over camp to a zone that is under camped especially since a lot of the players who were around my level could still hunt here and they were over in Mistmore as well. So I guess a lot of people try to get out of the zone as fast as possible. Maybe they're going over there because, uh, of course, a tank comes, but he's 14, yeah. Uh, I think they're going over there because the loot is a little bit better. There's actually uh, name guys that drop actual, uh, you know, loot that people want to buy. From over here in this zone, there's not that many named. And the ones that are are kind of high level, so you kind of have to build up to that point. And so I think, you know, people were just, oh no, holy crap, she's going to die. Let me hold on a second, guys. Need to make sure that I'm paying attention. Well, that makes it feel better. Okay. No, she actually took that hit uh, fairly well. Let me go ahead and toss a heal on her. Not bad at all. Okay, what about his pet? Oh, I can barely see it. There we go. Uh, that's the Enchanter's pet, actually. Where's our main pet? There it is. It's the mage pet. So I'm trying to keep the mage pets and the enchanter pets alive. It's a little bit more difficult than just clicking or selecting a, a group member. To click on a pet, you either have to actually physically click on it with your mouse, which can be difficult. There's a lot of stuff in the way. Uh, or you can use your F1, F2, F3 keys. Uh, oh, crap. Fatty's taking some hits. And I'm not being mean by calling him Fatty. That's literally what his name is, Fatty McFat. Uh, I guess he was going for the uh, the humor part because he has Homeland Security as his uh, his gill tag. So yeah, apparently he wanted to uh, have a little bit of fun, not only with his name, but with the gill that he chose. But to select a pet, say your Necro is in the second slot. So F2 would select the Necro, and then you, if you hit F2 again, it selects his pet. Now, the problem that I found with healing up pets, it doesn't always recognize when a pet is taking damage. I mean, the game is recognizing it, but when you're selecting the target, it may look like he's, you know, 100% or even at 90%, and then all of a sudden, he'll die, or it will drop down dramatically within like a like half a second uh, from, you know, 90% down to like 10%. It's, it's kind of weird. I'll go over here so I can get rid of all that that noise. Uh, you can hear the noise of all the ghouls that are still here. They're a little bit above us. They're all around us because they haven't finished pulling it. Uh, well, it makes me feel better. Okay, so I'm just making sure. But yeah, that zone is way 
away camp tonight. Uh, let me see who's on over here. 18 players and unrest, including the group that we literally just put together without a tank. Uh, so yeah, there wasn't that many people here. We actually, we were sitting at the entrance, uh, me and like two other people, and we, you know, started forming a group, and they started inviting other people that they knew that then ran over here. So we were there for about 25, 30 minutes setting up this little group that we have going. There's another guild already here, the College of Adventure, and uh, I think they showed up all at one time, and they're over here hunting some stuff together, which is kind of cool that they're hunting together as a, as a guild. Uh, and actually getting some stuff done, but that just goes to show you, like, they literally showed up why we were forming our group, so before they got here, <laughs> that's how many people were in the zone, even less than that, so, yeah, it's, it's, I don't, I don't understand why, I actually think, after going over to Unrest and fighting at the entrance, now, I haven't gotten further in, because, one, I'm not high enough level, and two, uh, it's always camp, so getting in those groups is kind of difficult, but from fighting at the entrance and getting a little steady, you know, a string of pools and it seemed kind of constant kind of like that what we get over here uh, I still feel that I'm getting more experience in unrest than I was getting anywhere close to miss more and that's during the double experience weekend that I feel that way so I don't even want to know what it's like to go there with oh crap I should not have done that I should not have done that let me go ahead and root these things up it lets me cast oh crap I'm rooted Okay, yeah, run. Um, yeah, they all ran and left me. I'm gonna have to gate, and hopefully it will go off. No, I got interrupted. Come on, let me gate. Uh, I believe the route's off if this gate doesn't take. Oh, and it took. Thank you. So going to the hallway is bugged. Yeah, you can't. There's several places over here that if you go the wrong path. Uh, you'll just aggro almost everything. That's something, again, like I've mentioned before, that you will just learn as you go through the game. And that's the difference between a pooler who's not familiar with the zone and a pooler who is. And you'll automatically, you know, just assume that the pooler who is familiar with the zone is, uh, you know, incredibly good at what he does because he is capable of, uh, you know, pooling and not making mistakes like that. When you get somebody new and they make mistakes like that over and over and over again, uh, it just seems like they're bad at their job. The difference really is that they're just not familiar with the area. And knowing just a few little things, you know, the, the, the no-nos of the zone, like don't go down that path ever uh, when you're being pulled or when creatures are following you or make sure you jump over this little spot, otherwise you're going to fall down and train, you know, another 50 creatures on you. Little tips like that, just very, very simple things that once you know what they are, dramatically increase your survival uh, rating and the survival of your, your group as well as just your overall reputation as a, a good pooler. Uh, I took one step and ten mobs passed through the floor and the wall and the ceiling. So yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's like I said, it's one of those places that you learn as you go. It really is a buggy zone. Must be bugged after that patch. It may be the patch. I know there's places like that in uh, in Lower Guck that it wasn't a patching, uh, you know, patch issue. It wasn't uh, you know coding or anything like that that was messing up. The game programmers literally wanted that one area to be very very tricky, and they wanted it so that if you if you were going to pull that area, you were going to get like 15 mobs at once, and so very few people ever pulled that. It's only on the days that everything would be camped that uh, you know somebody would say okay let, let's try that and you'd like met up to full and then you pull those mobs and try to fatigue death and get half of them or try mezzing the other half and uh, it, it's really one of those challenging difficult pulls but once you get it once you break it then it's all free for all then you'll have everybody in the zone going in there and constantly pulling uh, one or two at a time before all of them spawn uh, and it really is kind of a cool thing so it only takes you know, a group to do it. Sometimes groups would work together and be like, you pull half, we'll go ahead and try to pull off another half, maybe even get a third group in there to pull some of the other ones off. And the combination of all three groups working together to kill those mobs breaks the room or breaks the area for all of them. And then they can all enjoy the constant extra pulls here and there, you know, if, as long as you keep up with it. And you would find people would do that because everybody benefits. Occasionally, some group would get, you know, very greedy. And, uh, you know, if all three groups weren't pooling that area, I don't think one group would be able to handle it, even if they had 
uh, you know, excess power and stuff like that, because it's 15 mobs, you know, even if you're pulling them one at a time, you're handling those 15 mobs with your room and all the mobs along the path, so if you got greedy and the other group saw that, that one of the things that they could do was just stop pulling, let you have all of them, and before long the entire area would repop, you'd probably die on one of the pools not realizing it, or if you did realize it, that would be the end of the, the cooperation, the room repopped, and nobody got anything. So it was in your interest to not be greedy. I'm going to break for a bit. Uh, if we get a band together, let me know. Let me see if I can sell to a vendor on the island here. Hmm. Well, I guess, uh... I guess they're not going back in. <laughs> oh, man, Fatty died. Let me go ahead and toss Invisibility versus Undead on him. That way he can go in there and drag his body out at least. <laughs> Let's go in and make sure he's okay. So a couple of them are going to head over to an uh, Oasis, which I guess you could do. I kind of like the keep. Uh, would be a nice little place to go check out as well. And like I said before, Miss Moore is just way overcamped. I'm not quite sure why people love that zone as much the, as, as they do. Maybe I will find out as I uh, get into more and more groups there. But it looks like this group is a bust. So we are probably going to go ahead and end the episode here. That was pretty short episode probably i think what is that like 10 minutes maybe uh, i don't know if i like that length that's pretty low uh, i wish i could extend it somehow but i don't think you guys want to see me sit here and look for a group that is really boring especially considering there's not very many people on today so let's see is he going to come back yeah he came back so he's good so let me go ahead and give him a couple of buffs at least that way he's uh at least somewhat protected he's a shaman Let's see, do I have my heroic bond, spirit armor, and breeze? Let me see, can I get a sew from him? Yeah, I got I lost my sew when I got dispelled or when the root took hold. I don't know what happened with all those ghouls hitting me. <laughs> I lost it there, and thankfully I was able to get that gate off because I'm over encumbered just with my armor alone. It's, it's really uh, ridiculous, but there we go. So I guess we will end the episode here, guys. Uh, I do apologize for that. Maybe if I can get another group going here pretty soon, I will combine those two videos together so they're not so short. Uh, but if I don't, uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you do like these episodes, please hit that like button, subscribe. Definitely helps grow my channel, and I greatly appreciate it. Also, guys, I love hearing back from you. I love the comments that you guys have been leaving so far uh, on different ideas and different places you want to see. And I try to go to a, a, as many of them as I can. Obviously, I'm not high enough level to get to all of them. But uh, I will eventually, and I'm not going to forget about it. I wrote them down. I put them on a list. And as I get to that level, I will go check those those zones out for you so i do want to thank you guys for all of that and uh, for continually watching it's it's great knowing that you guys are enjoying these videos i'm greatly enjoying making them for you guys uh, it's kind of nice to uh, share this experience with people who played in the old days and people who are coming back and uh, checking it out once again or maybe somebody who's brand new to the game i've seen a few people comment uh, that they never got to play the game and they were kind of intimidated by it and i do understand that factor because it has been about I don't know, about like a week, week and a half since I played because I recorded so many videos during the uh, Double Experience weekend, or not weekend, because it went on from Wednesday to Monday, so it was there for a few days, but since then I haven't recorded as much because I had such a backlog and I was concentrating on a lot of my other games that I do series for, and uh, when I came back I was feeling a little bit uh, uneasy about playing my Cleric again because I was basically thrown into the deep end, thinking in my head, oh, I'll be in a group again, I'll need to be on the ball, I'll need to know what I need to be doing, and I'm a little rusty because it's been so long. And for those of you who are kind of like in the same boat, if you have a really high level character, you know, 50, 60, and you take a break for a little while, you'll go through that exact same thing. And it's it's kind of a uh, 22 Ranger LFG, we can get that person. Um, but yeah, it's kind of one of those things that <laughs> if you uh, if you take a break for too long, when you finally do come back, you feel a bit uneasy. But after about 20, 30 minutes, you, you fall back into the swing of things. I mean, you've done it for so long that it really has become like ingrained into you. And it really doesn't take that long. But I do understand that uneasiness, especially if you never group that much and then all of a sudden you're in a group. I kind of get that same uneasiness when I solo 
because I, I just don't solo that often. So I know I'm making tons of mistakes or I'm not playing to the the level that I could be if I just knew a little bit more about that kind of stuff. So when I got to go off and do that kind of thing because I can't find a group, uh, there's a little bit of uneasiness there, but you get over it after a little while. And again, this isn't supposed to be like the best way to play the game. This is just my playthrough and hopefully it's enjoyable for you guys. So again, uh, we will end the episode here, guys. I want to thank you, and I will catch you next time. Hey, guys, and welcome back. So basically, I'm just going to add this to the previous video uh, because that group broke up rather quickly, and uh, let me go ahead and heal this guy real quick. Now, we put a group, or I should say I put a group together. <laughs> After everybody left, they all abandoned it because we didn't have a tank, and uh, I guess they didn't want to sit around waiting for it any longer than they already had so uh, they took off and I stayed here with uh, Jess uh, Jess my own which is uh, the name of her character or his character whoever's playing it uh, she or he is a cleric uh, I believe level 19 might be 20 uh, by now because they got a res a uh, high level uh, cleric came into the zone and was resing and, and buffing people up as well as a high level enchanter was in the zone just tossing out uh, uh, clarity and things of that sort it kind of would have been extremely nice if there was even anybody in the zone. Uh, it's very, very empty right now. Let me see how many people are here. Uh, Twelve players. And that's including the, the four of us who are here in this group. Uh, and there's two people at the entrance looking for a group, but they're too low. They're 12 or 13. Uh, so we can't invite them into our group. Uh, fungi. Uh, they might be talking about the fungi tunic for the regen effect. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean, but... Yeah, there's not very many people over here, and it's, it's kind of crazy. So I put this group together. We have a ranger as a tank, which is almost unheard of. You don't really see very many rangers in the first place, and you usually almost never have them as a tank. Because, yeah, they can tank, but they're not exactly uh, the best at it. This guy is actually doing really, really good. It's the tank right here in front of me, Kojira, uh, or however you're supposed to pronounce that. We do have a ghoul as a pet our enchanter has a, a a ghoul pet right now so that's why i'm not too worried about uh the damage per second i'm not too worried with two clerics i mean we can alternate and do damage per second with our spells so i'm not too worried about that uh basically the reason i'm not doing too much other than healing is i'm still looking for more players if we lose somebody right now especially our tank that would be the end of the group again and i don't really want that to happen so I've been doing OOC every so often, which is something you have to do as the uh, the leader of a group. You kind of have to be on the ball with that. Uh, we'll teleporting behind us from the brew room. Hopefully he didn't bring friends. Uh, that would be pretty nasty if he did. Although with an enchanter, friends is always kind of welcome. You know, if, if you have a decent enchanter on you, you don't even really have to worry about too many ads. Uh, granted, if you get like 15 mobs at once, that might be a little bit much, even for a decent enchanter to uh, to really uh, take care of at this level. At, at higher levels, they get such uh, cool spells that help so much better with handling large groups, and that becomes kind of a you know just a necessity to have that because the rooms get harder and harder to pull. And if you don't have a really good tank or somebody who's constantly working on their skill as a tank as they progress through the levels. And then when they get to those areas, they're going to find it very, very difficult to really uh, do what is needed of them to survive in that zone effectively. And so then it really falls onto the shoulders of the enchanter or whatever healer you have. If you have a, a healer that's really, really good and has a huge mana pool, he might be able to uh, somehow, uh, you know, heal up your group long enough and effectively enough that even with bad pools, you can keep going, you know, and have like this constant stream though you can see right here <laughs> we had four ghouls there for a second because I think his uh, his mez broke and so now he's just mez or not his mez his uh, charm broke so now he's just mezzing all of them uh, he's gotten two down so far he's gonna get that third one here in a second Let's see nope he's not getting the third one so no the, the third one is finally uh, his pet again okay that's fine kill this so I wanted to uh, talk a little bit on this episode about some of your comments that uh, some of you guys have been emailing me and asking questions on how do you record uh, you know you guys kind of want to do the same thing not just with video games but you have a lot of ideas and a lot of different things you want to put out there on the internet but you're kind of worried about 
putting stuff out there on the internet, you know, you're kind of, uh, I won't say afraid, but it, there is a certain amount of anxiety with doing that for the very first time, you know, putting yourself out there for everybody to see and getting some of that negative feedback, which is bound to happen. Now, I've been on doing these videos for about a year now, and I have to say overall, the the welcome that I've gotten has been outstanding. I've, I've loved it so much so far. I mean, yeah, you're going to get trolls. Uh, you're going to get people on there who will say nasty things or are going around just trying to get a rise out of people. Uh, but, you know, if you're passionate about something, the viewers can hear that. They can see that. They can feel that even through uh, the computer. And they, if you're passionate about it, they're going to be passionate about it. And they're going to enjoy your, your videos. So whatever it is that you want to do, I, I understand that there's a little bit of fear in there, but you should do it. You should try it. And don't be uh, swayed by people who say that you're no good because almost every story that I can possibly think of of somebody who's made it to you know a level that everybody else kind of admires and wants to get to one day whether it's in singing or acting or sports uh, will have a story usually multiple stories where somebody told them or multiple people told them uh, or everybody in, in some in some cases told them that they are not good enough to do what they were trying to do, that you should give it up, go get a real job, uh, whatever the case may be. Time on Breeze, Clerics, 14. Uh, let me see. Yeah, same here. So, just because people tell you that doesn't mean that's the, the truth. I mean, everybody has their own opinion, and maybe they were being honest, or maybe they were just being mean. Maybe they had something to gain from you leaving uh, and not doing whatever it is you were trying to do. Uh, but if you believe that you should be doing that, if you have a passion for that, my suggestion to you guys is just to try it out, just to do it. Now, I'm not saying quit your day job and devote your entire life to that aspect. Uh, I do these videos, but I still go out and have a job during the day, which is kind of rough because I'm doing so many videos. So I wake up early, go to work, and when I come home, the first thing I do is you know finish up any of the chores, that I got to get around the house, you know, I got to take the trash out, make sure all that is uh, good to go. Otherwise, I'll just never get around to it and I'll have trash in my house for, for weeks before I remember to do it. So I always concent concentrate on doing that stuff first, the housework that I got to get done that I've been putting off. And then I log on and I start making videos for you guys. And I'll do that till like 2 or 3 in the morning some days, wake up at, you know, 7 o'clock, go to work and start the entire thing all over again. So yeah, I'm working quite a bit uh, to get this stuff done, but you do have to put those hours in when you first start out. Maybe one day the channel will take off, I'll be able to do this full time, and I won't have to worry about the the work, you know, and, and leaving and, and not being able to have all those hours during the day to produce videos. And that would be fantastic. That would be uh, an awesome job, I think, to be able to actually do this full time. And if I had those extra hours, I'd be able to produce so much more content on so many more videos uh, than I'm already doing. I wouldn't just, uh, you know, relax and be like, oh, you know, I get seven or eight hours off during the day where now I can just sleep late and, and do what I want. Yeah, on some days I might be able to take advantage of that, but on most days I would just be constantly uh, playing more video games that I've been wanting to play for a while now. There's a whole list, a whole box of video games that I have that I haven't even started because I just don't have the time to do them yet and they look really really cool so I do want to get to them eventually uh, I like walking them back they disappear on me oh yeah he likes mobs that disappear on him that's uh, that's not a good sign <laughs> anytime a mob disappears on you in a zone I've mentioned this in the past before usually bad very 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 bad things are about to happen you almost always want a zone when that's the case if a mob disappears on you and you don't notice it right away. I understand it's kind of a nuisance to zone every single time, but holy crap, if you do not, you can have some pretty wicked uh, trains show up out of the blue, and a lot of the time, they will hit like a, a freaking Mack truck, and you will have like 60 guys show up, boom, kill you in one hit, because they all get one hit. And I don't know very many people who can survive uh, 60 mobs hitting them, uh, even just once a piece, so uh, I can see his spells going. Necro FD downstairs, we are dead. <laughs> so I guess the Necro uh, got hit. We got a pop right there. Or no, no, that was his pet breaking. So he's going to go ahead and grab that again. I can see his spells going. Yeah, so we should be fine. 
Let me go ahead and toss him a small heal. Now there is another thing I wanted to talk about, which is kind of on the same subject. A friend of mine uh, who was actually met through YouTube, uh, one of the viewers who you know posted a comment. As I said before, guys, I always read your comments. I always uh, check out uh, when somebody subscribes to me or subscribes to me. If they have it open so where people can see that, then when you guys uh, you know click that little button, it pops up on my list. I go check out your channel. I see what you're interested in. Uh, and then if I have uh, videos for that or I don't, maybe I'll make a few videos uh, to that effect. But uh, I met this, this person through that, that means, and uh, <laughs> they shared with me uh, something very special, I thought, which was a song that they, they uh, you know, did themselves. And it, it, it kind of sh blew me away because, you know, they were like, oh, I'm not that good. And, uh, you know, it was just something I did once. And, you know, they kind of always wanted to, to go that route and become a singer. But a lot of people told them they weren't good enough. And so after a while, it just kind of ingrained itself into their thinking. And, you know, now they, they don't ever see them themselves doing that like ever they're just not going to do it because they've been told so many times that they're just not good enough and it, it kind of blew me away because i was like you know how can somebody uh, be told that and then you know eventually just accept it i guess you know if you're told something enough you, you kind of will just have it ingrained into you but you know they went ahead and sent me the uh the impact or not the impact the, the song and uh, i played it and i was listening to it and my jaw just dropped it was like this scene, I don't know if any of you guys uh, had seen, uh, I think it's like UK Got Got's Talent or something. There's this old little lady who comes out on the stage and everybody just kind of like, you know, starts looking at the floor or laughing, you know, because this old little lady comes out there and on that kind of show, occasionally they will allow somebody through who's completely and totally horrible. Uh, who did we lose? We lost, uh, ouch, guys, I need to go. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, they had to leave. Well, it's just down to the three of us. I think we should be able to do this just fine still. But, yeah, the little old lady comes out. And I have to admit that, you know, when I first saw her, I was like, okay, she's probably one of those that they literally let through just so that everybody could have a good laugh about how how badly they sing. And uh, he, she opened her mouth, and it was just jaw-dropping. Opera singer kind of uh, song, and it was just, I would have paid money to have listened to that. You know, that's how good it was. I would have plopped down the money right then and there because that was an amazing thing. They sent me their song and I start listening to it and it was like deja vu all over again. I was listening to this and I was like blown away at just how amazing their voice really was. It was just something that I I couldn't fathom that somebody told this person, not just one person, but several people told this person that they were not good enough and they believed it and they believed it for so long that now they, they have it in their head that they will never sing again. And I was just heartbroken to hear that because they're amazing. I mean, I'm not even kidding, guys. It was fantastic. I, I, <laughs> I was just blown away. It was I'm speechless because there's very few people I hear on the radio uh, these days where I'm like, oh, you know, that's a really good singer. You know, I'll hear good songs. So obviously, they have good songs out there, well-written songs with a good melody or a good beat to them, but as far as voices go, nothing fantastic, nothing to blow you away. And this was one of those things that blows you away. And they were singing classical music, so I could totally see them in like an opera house or you know something like that where they can show off their voice and hit notes that other people can't even dream of hitting. And so I just want to go ahead and tell you guys that if you have a dream, if you have uh, a talent that you want to explore and want to uh, check out, uh, please, please do that because y I understand the, the singing field is kind of crowded and there's not a lot of room for it, but even if it's just you recording songs for yourself uh, for years, eventually some point in your life you may feel like sharing that and then you will have this huge collection of music that you produced for fun for yourself that then maybe you can actually make some money off of and turn it into a career because Again, it wouldn't have been something that's just so uh, new to you. Like, you just start it and you don't have very much of a catalog or anything like that. So don't listen to what other people say on that uh, on that front. You know, I understand 
you want your friends to weigh in, you want your family to weigh in and tell you uh, whether you're good or not so that you don't, you know, make a fool of yourself or at least feel like you're making a fool of yourself. But sometimes, for whatever reason, I have no idea why anybody would ever have told them they're not a good singer, but uh, they did, and this is kind of what's happened. So I hope one day they will change their mind and start singing again because uh, it was a joy to listen to. It was absolutely amazing. And so if any of you guys are out there in the same boat that you have uh, a passion that you're you're interested in, go ahead and post that down in the comments section below. Uh, normally I don't, uh, you know, uh, what's the word, encourage you guys to post a whole bunch of links to, you know, your own web pages and stuff like that because not very many viewers want to sit there and go through that kind of stuff. But if you are starting out on YouTube or any other channel uh, or any other uh, means out there, go ahead and post that down in the link. Let other people know about it. I'd be happy to help you guys start out because uh, I know how hard it is. So, again, guys, I want to thank you for watching. We're going to go ahead and end the episode here because I need to take a few minutes and see if I can find us some more people because if anybody else leaves, uh, I don't think we'll be able to survive very long. So, again, guys, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.